Hello. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, happy Thursday. Hope everyone's having a good day. Uh, for today's video, I want to talk about uh, ACMT, um, Apple Training lesson number four. If you were here in my, if you were here before watching my uh, other previous videos, I talked about ESD. Uh, I talked about uh, hardware Apple tools you need. And I also talked about uh, wireless airport time capsule. So, without further ado, this video I'm going to talk about basically uh, Apple Diagnostic, Apple's uh, service toolkit. Uh, basically, software programs that uh, commonly Mac technicians would use to troubleshoot MacBook Pros, MacBook Airs, and things like that. This will be a video in depth talking about what the programs do and things like that so if you're uh if you're gonna watch this video it's gonna be really really in depth and if you wanna learn about it then you're more than welcome this is part of the Apple certified Macintosh technician test you should be familiar with these tools if you're trying to get your Apple certification so without further ado I'm gonna talk about uh, Apple Diagnostic is called AD, which is uh, helps identify potential source of hardware issues. You turn off your computer, you press the power button and hold the D key in order for you to do Apple Diagnostic and it, it appears on the screen. You have all these options where you could do Command G to get started, Command L to change the language, Command R to run the test again, and you have your S to shut down and R to restart. So now we have, um, this is like a thorough um, diagnostic tool. There's another one called AST, which is Apple Service Toolkit. This is the one that uh, certified techs have. These are ones that the techs carry around with them to make sure that our computer's running perfectly fine and there are no hardware issues with it. You can download it on Mac machines. Um, if you have a server, it has to be OX Server uh, V10.6 or later. If you have a dedicated server, you could actually download it and, and the server would actually run it run it from there. So for example, if um for example if you have a you have a, a Mac technician and he has a computer and he tries to download the service kit from the internet and he wants to get in contact with the server, he's able to do that. Now that I'm talking now that I finished talking about that, I'm gonna talk about what AST does. Uh so this is AST in a nutshell. This is what it does. So we have Mac Resource Inspector, MRI. We have Notebook Adapter Diagnostic, NAD. We have Storage Diagnostic. We have Test Pattern Tools. We have Video System Test. We have Video System Test for Mac, iMac. We have Image Persistent Test. We have Cooling System Diagnostic. We have Audio Input and Output Test. We have Trackpad Diagnostic Test, Keyboard Diagnostic Test, and we have Trackpad Keyboard Mapper and Server bit setter SBS. So Mac Resource Inspector, it checks the centers on the parts, including the cables, fans, storage devices, power supply, display panel, logic board. Use MRI to help isolate failures and avoid unnecessary part replacements. We have network netbook uh, adapter diagnostic reports the condition of Intel-based Mac notebook power adapters. We have storage, just checks the hard drive. Devices using a suit of Apple Engineering approved tests and checks. We have test pattern tools, which is test pattern tools to help identify bright and dark pixels, anomalies, and foreign materials in LCD panels in the Apple display and Mac computers. Then we have our video system test. It's used to check MacBook Pro's 15 inch late 2010 computers to um, intermediate, intermit, display, freeze issues, and situations where the computer has completed. Uh, all MRI tests. So all of this is part of uh, the Apple Service Toolkit. Comes with all that. You could do all these tests. You could do a video test as well. Um, it's used for display issues on an iMac. Then we have the image persistent test. It checks the eternal IPS display in the Apple desktop and portable computers. Then we have the cooling system diagnostic. It checks thermal sensors, fans, heat seat in 2011, late, uh, later MacBook Pro, iMac, MacBook Air computers. 
It will both confirm correct operation help diagnose a service issue. CSD is useful for assisting users with questions about fan noise. Like if you have a fan that's overheating and things like that. Uh, audio input and output test checks the series of tones created by computer speakers. They can detect the built-in microphone. We have the trackpad diagnostic test. It's uh, intermediate. It's uh, interactive testing of trackpads. It tests the left, center, right click on the trackpad. It also tests the entire trackpad surface surface for touch input acceptance. So basically, you have a computer with or a trackpad. It tests the trackpad to see if it's working. Then we have the keyboard one, which checks the the keyboard. It requires a technician to press the key as press individual keys and identify spells keys for the keyboard. Then we have the trackpad keyboard mapper, which the trackpad and certain models contains important keyboard layout information, and trackpad keyboard mapper verifies and reprograms this information. We have the server bit setter, make sure Mac Mini or Mac Mac Pro with OSX server continue to identify as servers after a logic board or, or a back back uh, plane board replacement. Then there's also AST2, there's a newer version of AST. Um, it's Diagnostic Console over Cloud. And that's pretty much what AST is in a nutshell. I basically separated each and every one of them into categories and that's what it does. It checks everything on the computer hardware wise. And this is how it looks like. Come over here, that's how it looks like. In order for you to run it, you have to have the software and you hold the C button. And when you hold the C button, it'll give you a, a it'll show the hard drive, the DVD or CD or the flash drive that you're trying to boot from. And you just press enter and you select it, and you should be able to run the software program. Now that I talked about that, I'm gonna talk about installation for uh, Yosemite. What are the requirements for Yosemite? So it must have two gigs of RAM. It must have 8.8 .8 gigs of hard drive space. Recommended 40 gigs of hard drive space. Um, depending on what kind of computer you're trying to put it on, if it's an iMac, it has to be mid 2007. If it's a MacBook, it's late 2008. MacBook Pro, mid 2007. MacBook Pro Air, late 2008. Mac Mini, which is a little square rectangle figure, like it's real tiny. Early 2009, Mac Pro is a computer. Early 2008, XServe is a uh, XServe. Early 2009, and you can upgrade 10.10, 10.9, 10.8, 10.7, 10.11, 10.12, 10.13, 10.14, 10.15, 10.16, 10.17, 10.18, 10.19, 10.20, 10.21, 10.22, 10.23, 10.24, 10.25, 